Uh, my wife's Mercedes B Class W245 B180 CDI 2009. The glow plug light came on and the um, thermostat had been playing up for some time actually, whereas the car wasn't heating up properly and in cold weather it wouldn't get warm enough so that the um, increased tick over would uh, cut out. So it was ticking over a bit fast. It's not good for the engine because you know things don't heat up. But um, anyway, so the glow plug light came on and I had this thermostat and it spurred me on to get on with the job because I've been putting it off for a long time. And actually, um, these are the glow plugs which I took out, and I there's a video following this in a minute, and um, it's a bit disjointed, and I make apologies for that. It was uh, just a last minute thought, well, this hasn't been straightforward, I'll just put some information out there, because I couldn't really find very much when I was trying to take the thing apart. I couldn't find any really helpful videos. They may be there, but I couldn't find them. So hopefully what I've done in some way will help you do your car. Um, but looking at these things, they are actually... Um, I've got 12 volts across these connectors and if I just, um, that one is open circuit, it's taking 7 milliamps, that one is 1 1.5 ohms and it's taking 3 amps, that one's 1 1.3 ohms and that one is 1 1.7 ohms, so they're all slightly different resistances. One of them is completely faulty, and the other three are different. So you can see, you know, you can make draw your conclusions from that as to whether these are out on the way out. But I wouldn't recommend the amount of trouble it is to access these things. I recommend that you change all four. Once you're there, it's easy to do. And also stuck under there is I discovered the EGR valve, the exhaust gas recirculation valve, was absolutely blocked up to the gunnels with carbon, and that's covered in the video too. And also because the thermostat was faulty that's in the video too. So it's covering three things, it's the glow plugs, the thermostat and cleaning out the EGR valve and they're all in the same location, they're all uh, equally um, have to be taken off to get to these things, all the thermostats. So yeah, enjoy the video, I hope you find it useful and um, stay watching and you'll see my antics. I'm sorry the video is a bit disjointed but it's really quick and dirty effort just to give you some information on what needs to be done and what I found and if there's any tips in there might be useful to watch it might save you time all right so without further ado let's get on with the video here we are on the B180 CDI again done 160,000 kilometers 100,000 miles roughly about first confusing thing about this car is uh, I owned it for quite some time and being a B180 I thought it was 1.8 liters turns out it's a 2 liter so if we just go around the front it's my wife's car and I don't think I've ever come across such a confusing engine. Um, nothing <laughs> seems to be where it should be. Um, I've re I removed this thing off the top. There's my cup of tea there. There's the L-filter -fil box that goes on the top of here. Sits right on top of the engine. Down in this position. And there's a whole bunch of plugs and things you have to remove. It's very straightforward. Although they all unplug differently. They've all got different latches on them. They're not a common manufacturer which is somewhat annoying but you take the fuel filter off and you unplug all these plugs and there's some screws in the front of this um, actually I didn't even need to take those screws out see those two screws I took out uh, on the heat shield I thought that was holding it in but isn't it um, it just hooks into these eyelets down here these hook into there and then you lift this and lift this end up and then slide it that way and carefully disconnect everything and take it away and then, quite reasonably, I was expecting to see a nice row of glow plugs to be changed. The old um, coil spring lights come on on the dashboard indicating that there's a glow plug failure. And if you read the uh, various posts that on Mercedes, it seems to me that you know, they should uh, you know, fail about this time. So I'm going to change all four. They're about £10 each, I think, with discount. So I'm not a mechanic, by the way. I'm an electronics engineer. But anyway, uh, so there's your air intake from this pipe goes through the filter goes out there into the turbo out of the turbo um, out the turbo down through that pipe down there into what into the sorry goes around that way into the intercooler and then comes back out of the intercooler along this pipe here going into here into this uh, manifold arrangement with their mon monitoring valve and I'm to be honest with you I'm not entirely sure what else is in there 
but I have learned from a photograph I managed to locate again Mercedes W245 the glow plugs are down the back of there in there like vertically if I had a spanner if I had a socket wrench I'd be going down there so this arrangement has also got to be removed to get to the glow plugs and while I'm at it, I'm changing the thermostat as well because I understand the thermostat is down there as well. So a very confusing engine. You'd expect to see a cylinder head and usual things under there, and, but we, instead we've got mystical Mercedes pipe work and it's like tons of spaghetti on top. Um, so take, if you do do this, take plenty of photos. But that's where your Mercedes B180 CDI W245 glow plugs are, down the back of there. So I'm going to deal with taking this off. I might make a video of it now because it is not straightforward but it's got to be done so it's been a great car can't complain but boy um somebody was on acid or something when they designed this car so yeah this is part that's going to come off next there's this foam cover on here which you don't need to take off it's covering the um manifold assembly like a cover that recirculates the uh, crankcase gases to know how it works but that's what it does um but this cable's in the way at the moment, so what you need to do is just take that out, which removes this, releases this clamp, and with a bit of judicious wobbling, there's a clamp around the back that goes into the top of the dipstick tube that holds this cable on. If you release that clamp, then this whole cable will go over that way. Then you can take these four bolts, one, two, three, four bolts out, one at the back, and then this lid will lift off, and then you get access to the underneath, okay? So yeah, remember to put this back on, the uh, cable steady at the back when you uh, when you put it back together. Okay, so it's getting dark, right? So this is as far as we've got. Don't forget that that earth wire goes there. Look on this disassembly. So yeah, I've got to take these four bolts out here and remove the top of this manifold arrangement. Um, you have to undo this clip here. Move that clip down the pipe. Move that clip down the pipe. I've already done that one. And then as this comes off, you have to pull that pipe out and that pipe, but there's two pipes underneath you don't have to worry with. But um, also, I had to take a bolt out holding the dipstick mounting bracket to the back of this assembly, so don't forget to put that bolt back in. Um, yeah, so that's right, so that's, that's where we're going. And the disassembly, the reassembly will be the same, won't it? So goodness knows what's inside there, we'll find out. Right, so uh, this, the air intake from the turbo intercooler plugs into this th uh, air mass throttle body thing and there's a spring clip there which is a, the whole thing's a push fit but with these clips in place they prevent this spring wire from disengaging so you need to put those clips back there's one on the top and there's one on the bottom it's very fiddly but if you don't uh, when you give it the beans it'll oh, come on focus when you give it the beans it'll probably blow the turbo pipe out when you're in a high more boost because there's quite a pressure across there so make sure you put that clip back in top and bottom yeah, while I was at it, I just thought I'd show you. That's the pipe that was a job to undo. Um, that's what was holding the... After we took these four bolts out, these, that one, that one, this one, and that one, it was that that was down the back, and you have to undo the bolts holding the back of that manifold on. Um, and they're the awkward ones, actually. So, um, I'll just show you something. Right, where are we? This is a job and a half. <laughs> So there's all the bits and pieces which are still attached by various cables and umbilicals but as soon as they move out of the way not a lot of issue really there's the cap off the breather a weird arrangement with the foam cover on um as we discussed already and here's here's what it's like with everything removed you know the first thing i've done is in there there's the inlet to the engine i've pushed a rag in there to stop any bits and pieces falling in because that would be a disaster you guess where they would end up if they went in there not good so underneath there is a horrible hole, I'll show you in a bit. And then down here, if I just zoom in slightly, you can see the tops of the the glow plugs. This is one of the reasons why I'm in here, the glow plugs, as we discussed. And they're down there, four of them, and there's two of them down there between that item. Ooh, where is it? Sorry, talk amongst yourselves. Thermostat here, which I've got to change, which has um, been faulty for a while um, the car doesn't quite heat up properly and in very cold weather it remains on the high high idle setting it's just not getting hot enough for the idle to be reduced so it's not good for the engine running cool because the 
um, if it's um, not running at the right temperature, things like the pistons won't be exactly the right diameter. So you know, you'll cause excessive engine wear, it's not good, the oil's too thick. So it's, it's an 80 degree thermostat, and I've just bought one of those to put in, so I've got to take that out next. And just to recap on there, the injectors are down, not the injectors, the glow plugs are down in this valley. And there's a lot of rubbish. I had a diesel leak on this, you can see on the previous video, and there's a bit of diesel leak down into that valley in the cylinder head. And there's leaves and distritus. And before I'm going to take those injectors out, I'm going to blow that out with an airline just to blow all the crap away so that nothing falls into the cylinder head. Um, these caps, I've done these before, so I know these are just a push fit on top of the uh, glow plug and I've got a very useful tool which I use to get them off which is a trim removal tool this thing you can see it if I hold it there you can see it better focus you focusing thing oh, that focus it's interesting isn't it with my hand it might focus there it is you see the end of that tool um, it's a trim removal tool for pulling those um, trim mushroom locks out and things like that but it's very good you can just get it underneath the cap the cap's probably about 20 millimeters long between the, and under the cap and just leave them up and they pop off okay so don't pull them by the wires if you can help it because I don't think that's a very good idea okay so uh, what I'm going to do next is to uh, remove this clip. This, the, the water of the heating system is drained, or the cooling system is drained. There's a tap on the front uh, left-hand side of the radiator to take the, the panel off the bottom, and then you can just turn the little uh, null plastic knob to turn the tap on, and the coolant runs out, which I've saved in a bucket. I'm going to filter it and put it back, because the antifreeze is expensive, and it's polluting as well. So got to take that out, take the thermostat out, it's very straightforward, you've got this far, the thermostat should be no problem for you. And then I'll show you changing one of the um, one of the, uh, the, the uh, glow plugs so that you can see how that's done. But anyway, and then we'll deal with putting this back together after that onerous and uh, difficult disassembly. Okay, so uh, got the airline. It's going to blow out the crap down here, so stand by. Quick blow out. So the thermostat is off. It is off. I was expecting if you look down in that hole you can see the thermostat. Well you could a minute ago. It's gone out of focus now. There it is. Normally you could sort of see they're stuck open or not working properly. That one seems to be slammed shut. But what there is is this valve doohickey on the end here has actually come out. I'm guessing that's probably just a non-return valve. I don't know what that is but I can investigate it. But maybe it's not non-returning, causing sort of, sort of um, bad circulation in the engine. Because if I compare that to the new one over here, you can see the new one is flush and all nice and done. The spring looks a bit manky, doesn't it, in there? But it's new and it's fitted flush with the end of the pipe. So that thing has come out on our engine, but we'll find out when we put it in, see whether she heats up properly now. Anyway, I thought you'd be interested in that. So there's a new thermostat down in there. I'll just get it to focus on that bit. No, nope, I can't. So I can. There she is. Right, right down in there, look. I've managed to sort this camera out, so we've now got stabilisation. Fantastico. Right, so just wipe that on the trousers so I can zoom in a little bit. But you can see there's the end of the old glow plug down there. So I'm just going to show you changing this one. And what I've got is a... You have to have a very long 8mm socket to go on the top. Right, what, um, before I undo this, right, so it's on there. There's a word of warning um, which I've read on a couple of blogs and um, forums. I don't know if it's true, but the glow plug looks like this. Okay. So that's the end of the glow plug, really well zoomed in, but you can see there's the connector, 8mm bolt, the threaded section, and the long part with the glowy bit on the end. And uh, it's a bit pitted, isn't it? Or oh, is that dirt? Is that dirt or pitting? 
and that's just dirt. Anyway, they say that if it takes more than 20 foot pounds of torque to undo it, then stupidly it says run the engine. Well, good luck running the engine. It'll take you about an hour and a half, two hours to put it together, another hour to strip it down again, and then you're back to square one where it's cooled down. But these have been quite loose, but it says it goes above 20. Um, be careful because it can strip them off. But I know glow plugs are a problem. I have seen lots of forums where the engine's all coked up and the glow plugs are snapped off and then it's a head off job and a nightmare. But these actually came undone very easily and they're very clean. This is just has, this is number two, this one. It's just as it's come out. So it looks pretty clean actually. So just don't overdo it. If it won't come undone, then don't force it. I don't know if it's true or just a bit of, of scaremongering because mechanics like to engage on these forums, don't they? And preserve the mechanicing trade by making it sound fearful. But beware, a uh, little bit of knowledge is a bad thing, especially somebody who thinks know what I'm talking about. You know who you are, but I'm finding out the hard way. I might snap it off, I don't think so, but just use a small, small wrench and take it easy when taking these out and then put the new one straight back in so that nothing can drop down into the cylinder, okay? So I'm gonna do these other two now and push the plugs back on and then I'll get back on with the water pump again. So that's that. All right, so we're in the shed, and uh, yeah, EGR valve. Look at that. Talk about, I had a poke around with it. I did um, use the blow lamp to get the EGR valve out because it's uh, it lives in this hole around here, that one there. And from the outside, the EGR valve looks like that, okay? And you can buy them second hand for about 40, 50 quid. But on the inside, look at this. Look how much... Can you see the detritus in there? I mean, I'm surprised that's even working. Look how clogged up that is. Nasty. Of course, this could cause the engine management light to come on eventually when it gets so bad that the gases just can't get through at all. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have to clean that out carefully. I'm not quite sure how. But to get it out, I had to warm the housing of the... I had to warm apply blow lamp on there to... Um, and then it came out easily, otherwise it just would not budge. And I didn't want to damage it, I wasn't sure what was on the inside, okay. So, there's a lot of detritus, it's almost blocked up. And this is where the air comes in. And there. So, without further ado, oh yeah, and that's where the exhaust gas recirculation comes from. That uh, little pipe there, and that's almost blocked as well. So, I'm going to scrape and clean this, and then wash it out in the tank over there. And... Uh, yeah, put it back together but i think it was timely because i understand that they do fail around about the hundred thousand mile mark so while you're at it you might as well do the egr the glow plugs and the thermostat while you're in there okay so that's what we're going to do we're going to clean that up right so it's clean now <laughs> the worst part was that hole there as my wife changing gear usual um that hole there that leads through from the exhaust was blocked up to probably a third less than a third of its diameter with a very hard crusted kind of ceramic stuff you get on valves you know the hard crusted um, crunchy it took a lot of removing actually and um, there's the end of the valve it's pretty clean I mean considering it was so blocked up now it is uh, free of stuff and then down in here look you can see we've cleaned all that out you can see that not the best situation for video but it's much cleaner all together acceptable now I should just blow it off with the airline and then put it back together so yeah EGR valve what a horrible thing clearly I'm not too pretty about getting it shiny because there'll be dirty diesel fumes going through there pretty soon and the car's done 110,000 miles so this is hopefully the last time it's going to be cleaned out before the car has reached its useful the end of its useful service life so what a horrible job though, my shed is absolutely covered in black, horrible, greasy detritus. It's just carbon and oil mixed together in a sludge and a slurry and a paste and hard bits and soft bits. Oh, it's nasty. The dirtiest job I've ever done on a car, I think. Diesels aren't fun. They're not fun to drive, they're not fun to work on, and they're not fun to cycle alongside, and they're not fun, some fun to walk alongside or behind. Diesels just aren't fun, are they? Right, we're just screwing the manifold in place. That's this thing here which I've just cleaned out. They go on in these four bolts, as we said, and it, do you remember, it's these. These ones with the T... something or other socket head, but they're the ones that came out, so they're the ones that are going back in. 
They seem longer than they should be, but they're the ones, so that's what's putting back. 